Hi, I'm Lily. Today, I'm going to read you the story, Roar the Matilda, Chapter 11. We read 10 chapters, and today, I'm going to read you Chapter 11, Bruce Bruter, Part 2. Let's read it. Um, where is it? It must be Bruce Bruter here. And we read four pages, yes, yeah, four pages that day. And today, he knew there was a catch in this something, but he wasn't sure where. Can't I take it home is that? He asked. That would be that would be impolite, the trench boy said, with a crafty grin. You must show Cookie here how great, grateful you are for all the trouble she's taken. The boy didn't move. Go on, get, get on it. Get on with it, the trench boy said. Cut a slice and taste it. We haven't got all day. The boy picked up the knife and was about to cut into the cake when he stopped. He stared at the cake. Then he looked up at the trench bowl. That, then at the tall, stringy cook with her lemon juice mouth. All the children in the hall were watching tensely, waiting for something to happen. They felt certain it must. The trench bowl was not a person who would give someone a whole chocolate cake to eat just out of kindness. Many were guessing that it had been killed with the pepper or castor oil or some other full tasty sub substance that would make the boy violent sick. It might even arsenic, and he would be dead in ten second, ten seconds flat. Or perhaps it was a bobby trout cake, and the whole thing would blow up the moment it was cut. Taking a blow of the moment it was cut, taking Bruce Brutter with it, no one in the school put put it the past the trench bowl to do any of the things. I don't want to eat, the boy said. Taste it, you little brat, the trench bowl said. You are is drooling. You are inserting the cook. Very grinderously, the boy began to began to cut a cut a thin slice of the vast cake. Then he lured the slice up. Then he put down the knife and took the stingy things in his fingers and started to very slowly to eat up. Isn't it's good, isn't it? The trench bowl said. Very good, the boy said, chewing and swallowing. He finished the slice. Have another, the trench bowl said. That's enough, thank you, the boy murmured. I ha I said, have another, the trench bowl said. And now there was an altogether sharper edge to her voice. Eat another slice. Do as you are told. I don't want another slice, the boy said. Suddenly, the trench bowl exploded. Eat, she shouted, banging her her head with the ringing crop. If I tell you to eat, you will eat. You want a cake. You store a cake. And now you've got cake. What's more, you're going to eat it. You do not leave this platform and nobody leaves this hole until you have eaten the entire cake that is sitting there in front of you do i make myself clear Ruta? do you get my meaning oh it's a very large cake and bruce Ruta can eat it that little boy the boy it boy looked up at the trench bowl then he looked at then he looked at the then he looked down at the enormous kick. It 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 Trunchbull was yelling very slowly. The boy cut himself another slice and began to eat it. Matilda was fascinated. Do you think he can do it? she whispered to Lavender. No, Lavender whispered back. It's impossible. He, he'd be sick before he has halfway through. The boy kept going. 
When he had finished the second slice, he looked at the trench bowl hastily. Eat! She shouted. Greedy little thieves who, who like to eat cake must have cake. Eat faster, boy. Eat, eat faster. We don't want to be... We don't want to be here all day, and don't stop like you're doing now. Next time you stop before it's all finished, you will go straight into the chalky, and I shall lock the door and throw the key down the well. <gasps> the boy cut a third slice and started to eat it. He finished this one quicker, quicker than the other two. The other two are... The boy cut a third slice and started to eat. He finished this one quicker than the other two, and what and that was done. He immediately picked up the knife and cut the next slice. In some peculiar way, he seemed to be getting into his trap. His, his stride. Matilda, watching closely, saw no signs of distrust in the boy yet. If anything, he seemed to be gathering con confidence, and he, he went along. He's going well, she whispered to Lavender. He will be sick, Lavender whispered back. It's going to be horrid. When Bruce Porter had eaten his way through half of the entire enormous cake, he paused he paused for just a couple of seconds that took several deep breaths. The trunchable stood with hands on hips, glaring at him. Get on with it, she shouted. Eat it up! Suddenly, the boy let out a gigantic bell with which which rolled around assembly hall like thunder. Many of the odd odd Audience began to giggle. Silence! Shouted, shouted the trench bull. The boy cut himself another thick slice and started eating it fast. There were still no signs of flagging or giving up. He certainly did not look as though he was about to stop and cry out. I can't! I can't eat anymore! I'm going to be sick! He was still in there running. Wow! And now, a, and now a subtle change was coming over the 250 watching children in an audience. Earlier on, they had danced in, in spending, oh, impending, impending disaster. They had spread themselves for an unpleased scene in which the wretched boy stuck to the gills with the chocolate cake would have to surrender the back for mercy when they would have watched the trum triumphant trunchable forced more and and still more cake with the mouth of the gasping boy. Not a bit of it. Bruce Brutcher was three quarters of the of the way through and still going going strong. One sensed that he was almost beginning to enjoy himself. He had a mountain to climb and he was jolly well going to reach the top or die top or die in the attempt. What is more what is more he had now become very concerned consists of his audience and of how how they were all silently rooting for him this was not this was nothing else nothing less than a battle between him and the ma mighty trench bull. suddenly someone shouted come on brucey you can make it the trench bull whirled around and yelled silence the audience watched intently oh Oh, this book says summon, but in the movie, Matilda said it. Do you know? It's a little different. And they, they were longer to start cheering, but they didn't dare. I think he's going to make it, Matilda, Matilda whispered. I think so too, Lavender whispered back. I wouldn't have believed anyone in the world could eat the whole cake that Pour over cake that size. The trench bull doesn't believe it either, Matilda whispered. Look at her, she's turning redder and redder. Ah, she's going to kill him if he wins. 
the boy was slowing down now. There was no doubt about that, but he kept pushing the stuff into his mouth with the Dutch perseverance of a long distance run runner who was sighted the finishing line and he and knows he must keep going as the very fast mouthful disappeared a tremendous cheer rose up from the audience and children were leaping on onto their chairs and yelling and clicking and shouting well done brucey good for you brucey you won a gold medal brucey the turntable stood motionless on the platform. Her great horsey face had turned the color of Martin Lava, and her eyes were glittering with fury. She glared at Bruce Berger, who was sitting on his chair like some huge overstock group, replayed commandos, unable to move or to speak. A fine sweat was batting his forehead, but there was a grin of triumph on his face. Suddenly, the turnbull longed forward and grabbed the large empty china platter on which the cake has rested. She raised it high in the air and brought it down with a crash rod on top of the ranch Bruce Booker's hat and pieces flower all over the platform. The boy was by now full now so full of his cake he was like a sackful of mat can can't and you couldn't have hurt him with a sludge hammer. He simply shook his head a few times and went on grinning. Go to blazes screamed the trench bull and and she marched off the platform followed closely by the cook. This is Brewster. This is Bruce Brewster when he finished his cake. Um, now, oh, where is it? There was this large cake, and now nothing.